Jocelyn McLean lived near Atlanta, was 29 years old, had two small children and was pregnant with a third child, a baby girl. She was visiting rural Mississippi when she went into labor and gave birth to her daughter Emberly McLean Bernard. Her daughter was born six weeks premature and weighed less than five pounds when she was sent home. She did not cry and she barely ate. After two days she began gasping for air and was turning blue. Ms. McLean took her to the nearest emergency room, where the medical team went directly to the code blue. For four hours they tried to save her, but she unfortunately died. Ms. McLean waited for the results of the autopsy for 15 months to understand what happened to her baby, and the result of the autopsy stunned her. The state medical examiner concluded that the death had not occurred because of a medical problem, but had been a homicide, the result of blunt force injuries with signs of strangulation. The medical examiner ruled without talking to the emergency doctor and without seeing the hospital record, and his decision was signed off by his supervisors. As the result Ms. McLean was charged with capital murder and her two children were removed from her custody for almost a year. The forensic experts were implying that there were signs of potential sexual abuse. The prosecutor theorized that Ms. McLean was upset by her relationship problem with Embury's father and killed the baby in a postpartum snap. Ms. McLean asked twice to take a lie detector test, but none was administered. Ms. McLean spent almost a year in jail. She would tell her children over video visits that she was working at a new job. During the pandemic, she was released on a $250,000 bond and a $350 per month ankle monitor. Her case was reviewed by another forensic expert, this time a black woman, Dr. Joy Carter. The revision determined that the state examiner didn't see the emergency records and didn't mention other alternative explanations for the baby's condition. Days before the trial the medical examiner changed his mind. The baby's death was not a homicide after all. The baby's injuries were consistent with life-saving efforts in the hospital and a diaper rash. The charges against Ms. McLean were dropped and she was released. She said it was a type of relief, that somebody believed me. This story was based on an article from the New York Times. You can find a link in the description.